if you could tell us sort of in layman's terms what uh, Newton does. I know it's a platform we discussed earlier, that's sort of an overused mm -hmm. word at the time, but you guys really are one. We're basically a way for anybody, any content owner, um, whether they're an, a great big publisher, an individual teacher, anybody in between, to kind of plug in um, and use our services and then uh, kind of plug back out. So what we do is we data mine education content and then we personalize it. So once kids are doing all their work on a, a tablet, it's suddenly possible to get all the data about their performance, right. what they know, what they don't know, how they learn best, and it turns out they produce a ton of data. It turns out that students produce more data on a daily basis than any other kind of demographic group. So you do 10 minutes of searching in Google, you produce a dozen data points for Google. You do 10 minutes of work in Newton, you might produce dozens or even hundreds of other data that just cascade out of that. So kids just bleed data. It's really hard to get it, but one of the things that we need is device-powered learning. And then, since we know literally at that point you're producing so much data, we know everything about what you know and how you learn best. You learn math best in the morning between 9.30 and 11 a.m. We know that. The 40-minute burst you do at lunch every day, you're not retaining any of that. Go hang out with your friends. Right. You learn science best with vid video clips or games instead of text, or, or in addition to text, and the ratio should be 78% and whatever. You know, you learn you learn history best in 22-minute bite sizes. At the 24-minute mark, your click rate always declines. It's almost Orwellian at some level, but the the so let me interject on the Orwellian yes. thing because I've heard this before. You know, I'm a little sensitive. To it. Um, well, not, we, all, not all of a big big brother's bad, right? I mean, <laughs> we are never we are a giant data mining company, right? right. But, we, but unlike other data mining companies, we are not ever, and I mean never, marketing your data, selling your data. There's no advertising. There's no product placement ever. Uh, there's been a tremendous amount of money from venture capital firms into the educational space over the last couple of years. There's a lot of optimism, there's a lot of cool stuff happening. But there are also some skeptics that might say that we've seen this before. It happened when Web.1.0 came along. You know, there's always these utopian hopes for technologies and education. What's different this time around? A couple of things. One is bandwidth and the other is devices. Mm -hmm. Recent history teaches us that the internet ultimately just revolutionizes any industry that has a media or information based product. If you can put a chunk of that product, not all of it, but a lot of it through a pipe and get it to get it to people directly, it's just inevitable, right? right. And so the big changes have come before to every other industry. The last two that haven't really changed yet um, completely are video and education. And I think they both needed more broadband and they both needed better devices. Right. So And by device you mean not a personal computer but yeah, a I mean like iPad tablets, or yeah. yes. When I started this business four or five years ago there was still there was a lot more skepticism then. The iPad came out and there's no skepticism on the part of publishers now. Like every publisher that I talk to when we talk to all of them will tell you that um, they expect printed textbooks to be utterly gone in 10 years. And Traditional textbooks, textbooks gone in 10 gone, years? Totally gone. Wow. Um, and over 50% of the market will probably be digital in five years. So why carry around a, a very heavy backpack full of books that ultimately don't actually contain that much content? Right. You know, with Newton, with my company, you're basically um, uh, getting access to an a publisher's entire portfolio of content, and we can personalize it for you. So if the perfect little bit that you need is from last year's book or right. next year's book, right. or the perfect piece you need is video, because you learn right. this thing better with video, we know that. That's how you get it. You can't do that in a printed textbook. From a concrete thing, I log in and I'm learning calculus, whatever, yeah. whatever it is, and, and, and you, you can see that I have a hole in some of my prerequisites, that I didn't yes. really learn algebra yeah. properly or yeah. trig properly, and those concepts are so crucial, That's and then you can, you, can, you can personalize my experience of what questions and what exercises I get next. And that's yep. what your software does, but you, the exercises you use and are, are from a Pearson's or from a McGraw-Hill. The idea is, let's give you a lifelong profile, you the student, that you control. Mm -hmm. and, and it just gets progressively smarter, so you know, you're, you're investing equity into it. Your work is equity. Mm -hmm. And you, know, you do 7th grade math and 8th grade math. By the time you get to ninth grade, we know all the things you didn't really learn properly in 7th grade or 8th grade. You learned it up to this level, but it's not quite high enough right. to get you to the next thing. And then, so we can predict things like, oh boy, you're going to have trouble with your homework next Tuesday. Because mm -hmm. it's got some concepts in it's it. You le never learned the prior concepts properly. You're a private venture-backed uh, company here in New York City, and you have 90 or so employees. Or yep. where, where do you plan and hope to be in, say, three or five years? How are you going to try and ride this wave? There, there are two big problems in education. One is um, personalization. The other is access. Personalization because we have a factory model. And that factory model has served us well up until recently. It, it drove down costs enough that every kid mm -hmm. in the world could, right. in the rich countries could get it. That was a good thing. But it's also, there's a lot of bad things about the factory model. We all know what they are. It's boring for some. It's frustrating for others. It's alienating. Um, so Newton is solving that problem right now. We're literally the, the polar opposite of the factory model. We blow it to smithereens. There's no two students who have the same experience on any one day. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. But the next problem we want to solve is the access problem. So even today, only 54% of the world's kids get access to a primary school education, so sixth grade. And only 22% get access to secondary high school. Right? Those are very 20%, low numbers. Right? So yeah. We're wasting of almost four-fifths of our human talent. And, right. and in this day and age, it can, it's a solvable problem. It's like no one ever, people who should be marching the streets about it, but they aren't because it's always been like that. Mm -hmm. And now suddenly it's solvable. You can get cheap devices, cheap broadband in the developing world. We can solve these problems if we really care to.